I'm Anna Farrah Simpson from London. When I was a baby, I had a hip disorder. That meant I had to be in a cast for about nine months up until my first birthday. Because I was immobilized, I had to find other ways to get what I want. So instead of crawling over to a toy, I would have to get the toy to come to me. Because of that, my mind definitely grew faster than my body. I'm trying to put some energy into the field of mentalism by jumping off things or swimming while reading minds. I find it hard to sit still for more than 10 seconds, and so I want to put that untapped energy into mentalism. For this trick, I'm not jumping out of an aeroplane, just attempting to control your mind. Pen, teller, can I make you think what I want you to think? Guess we'll find out. Please welcome the young, sharp mind of Anna Ferris Simpson. <laughs> choices, choices, choices. Chocolate or strawberry? Yes or no? To be or not to be? Hey, pen or teller? Did you know that every day the average adult makes 35,000 decisions and each comes with a consequence for better or for worse? So, how cool would it be if we could influence the decisions made by other people? We could get the job we've always wanted, go out with the boy or girl of our dreams, or hey, just get a yes to everything we could ever ask for. Well, tonight, I'm going to attempt to be in full control of the decisions made by Penn and Teller to get the outcome I want, a fuller's trophy coming down from the sky. Are you ready? Let's go. Here I have three decks of picture cards, a musician's metronome, and a large die. But first to the cards, as there are three decks, and we need to narrow it down to just one. Pen, Teller, I'd like you to think of a number. One, two, or three. Don't let the number on the die influence you. Pen, what's your number? One. And Teller, what's your number? Two. One and two. So, we'll get rid of those two decks, leaving deck number three. By giving you these cards, you now appear to have full control over them. There you go. Thank you. Now, Pen and Teller know this, but maybe you don't. Lots of magicians make their living out of giving innocent audience members what appear to be free choices, but actually aren't. Watch this. Pen, I'd like you to take the elastic band off of the cards, split the deck in two, and give half of them to Teller face down. Meanwhile, Teller, I'd like you to point to any member of the audience, and if it's you, please stand up. Hiya. What's your name? Stephanie. Hello, Stephanie. Okay, shall we use Penn's half of the deck or Teller's? Teller's. Teller's? Pen and Teller, please swap halves of the deck. And again, shall we use Penn's half of the deck or Teller's? Teller's. Teller's. Now, Pen, you're actually holding Teller's half of the deck. So, Teller, can you put all the cards you have in the bin so we can continue? Brilliant. You can sit down. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, this next choice is possibly the hardest to control, as there are about 20 cards in there, and I need you both to choose a specific one. Now, to do this, I've created a brand new technique I like to call a time force. Catchy name, I know. <laughs> so, in order to do this, what I'd like you to do, Pen, is deal the cards face up onto the table, and tell her you're just gonna indicate stop when you see a picture card you like the look of. However, for a time force to work, there has to be some sort of timing device. So, I'd like you to deal the cards out to the beat of this metronome. You guys understand? I believe so. Awesome, let's go. Off you go. Chicken, octopus, chick, cow, fox, fish, sheep, a platypus, shark. Stop, shark. And now, I'd like you to put all the other cards away, leaving only the shark card out. Holding the shark card out. Okay, question. Did Penn and Teller end up with the shark card due to the decisions they made? Or was I able to influence every one? Penn, I'd like you to read what it says at the bottom of that card. I will. I influenced you to choose the shark. Now, I'd like you guys to ask, is this really enough to prove I've been in control the whole time? I don't think so. So I'd like to refer back to the decks that you both rejected at the start. As you'll see, they both say, rejected. I'll give each of you one of these. 
And now, pen. What I'd like you to do, go through every single card in that deck. You can fan them out on the table and show everyone what's on every single card. They're all sharp. <laughs> And now, some magicians have multiple ways they can end a trick. For example, Teller's deck could be filled with a completely different animal in case that's what he went with. So, Teller, can you too show everyone what is on those cards? A uh, shark on every single one of them. That is because the entire time I knew that you were going to choose the shark card. And hey, if that isn't proof enough, there isn't even a number six on my die. Just a picture of a shark. <laughs> and one last thing. Pen, can you read what it says at the bottom of my shoes? Uh, Teller will pick the shark. <laughs> Thank you. Anna Ferris Simpson! So nice to meet you. Thank you, and you? Wow, how long have you been doing this? I was first introduced to it when I was about three because I used to suck my thumb and I used to kind of stroke a silky or lens cloth. And when I was about three, my dad took my lens cloth, put it in his hand and made it disappear. <gasps> and since then, I've always wanted to kind of create that wonder that I felt to other people. So do you think that mentalism will change with young women getting into it? I really hope so, because a lot of the time when you think of mentalism, you think of a man in a suit getting your card, and I just kind of want to take it away from that and really diversify, and so things I do are just like, I hang upside down and I, I bungee jumped while doing mentalism and stuff. I'd really want to make it exciting and show that no matter what you do, there's a way to incorporate what you love into it. Oh my goodness, Yeah, that's very impressive. Thank you. All right, well, let's go to Penn and Teller and awesome. see if they know how you did your trick. Hi, uh... Guys. Hi, 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 Anna. You know, if we had our way, um, many, many more of the magicians on the show would be more like you and less like us. Oh. My uh, daughter is uh, 14. Really she studies know. magic all the time, and she has so few role models. And thank you so much for coming out here and giving her another one. Uh, thank you. And let's talk about your mind control, Anna. Let's do it. Because you really, really, really wanted to convince us that you were doing a force. You really did. <laughs> you wanted us to catch you many steps of the way. But you didn't do a force. <laughs> That's our whole point. And you all did something that is so sneaky and so underhanded and almost to the border of cheating. <laughs> and we would not have caught you if we hadn't done that same thing ourselves before. Oh, no. uh -huh. uh, there is something on stage that is so common to us and so often on the show that we don't even think about it. But we also know that when you're trying to bust a magician, things you take for granted are the things that are most often gonna take you down. So I will tell you, you would have fooled us 100% if we hadn't built the same kind of thing that you built right here and have right there in front of us. So we think that there's something on stage that was doing a lot of the magic that you didn't want us to even think about, and we think that we thunk it. Do, so, is that right? I think they've definitely got it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much.